Imagine for a moment that you're a newborn baby. The world bombards you with a chaotic symphony of sounds, sights, and sensations. Yet within a few short years, you'll be able to use those sounds to express complex thoughts, share stories, and form deep bonds with others. How does this astonishing transformation happen? Traditional explanations revolved around the idea that children learn to speak primarily through imitation. But then along came Noam Chomsky, a linguist and thinker who wasn't afraid to shake up the status quo. He proposed a revolutionary theory that sent shockwaves through the fields of psychology, linguistics, and philosophy, the idea of universal grammar. Chomsky argued that our brains might come pre-wired with a kind of blueprint for language. This inborn template, he suggested, is what allows children to grasp the intricate rules of grammar and language structure with amazing speed and creativity. But to truly grasp why this idea was so radical, we need to rewind a bit. In Chomsky's time, the dominant school of thought was behaviorism. This viewed the mind as a blank slate with all complex behaviors, including language, learned through a system of imitation, rewards, and punishments. But Chomsky saw flaws in this approach when it came to explaining language. Let's delve deeper into why Chomsky felt the behaviorist explanation of language fell short. Think about how children learn to speak. Their early attempts are full of delightful errors. I go to the store, the ball throwed me. These aren't just random imitations of what they've heard. These mistakes are revealing. Children aren't simply memorizing phrases. They're actively trying to apply rules, even when they overgeneralize them. This implies an underlying sense of grammar, an innate ability to seek patterns within the chaos of language. They seem to possess an understanding that words have different forms and functions. They might not explicitly know the terms verb or past tense, but it's like a little linguist lives inside their brains, searching for regularities and structure. Chomsky also put forth a concept called the poverty of the stimulus. This argues that the language input children get from the adults around them is actually quite messy and full of errors. Yet, they somehow don't just reproduce these flawed examples. They filter them instinctively searching for a deeper underlying order. It's as if our brains are primed to look beyond the surface variations and tune into the hidden grammar that guides all human language. So if language isn't solely learned through imitation, what's the alternative? This is where Chomsky's bombshell theory of universal grammar comes into play. Chomsky proposed that all humans, regardless of their culture or native tongue, are born with an innate mental template for language. Universal grammar, he claimed, is a set of fundamental grammatical principles hardwired into our brains. It's not a specific language like English or Swahili, but rather a deep structure that lies at the very core of what makes language possible. Think of universal grammar as a universal translator pre-installed in our minds, a remarkable piece of biological software that allows us to decipher the seemingly arbitrary sounds and symbols of any language and extract meaning. Imagine encountering an alien language for the first time. Confronted with a stream of unfamiliar words and syntax, how could you ever begin to understand it? Chomsky's theory suggests that our brains come equipped with a basic framework, a set of core principles that allows us to crack the code. These principles might include the ability to recognize the difference between nouns and verbs, to understand how word order conveys meaning, and to grasp the concept of recursion, the ability to embed phrases within phrases, a hallmark of complex human language. This groundbreaking idea offered a compelling explanation for the remarkable ease and speed with which children acquire language. It also shifted the focus away from solely looking at external influences and instead acknowledged the incredible power of the internal biological machinery of the human mind. Universal grammar doesn't negate the importance of environment and exposure to language. Children still need to be immersed in spoken language to activate this innate potential and develop fluency in a specific tongue. But Chomsky's theory suggests that our brains come pre-wired with the basic building blocks, the fundamental scaffold upon which the intricate architecture of human language is constructed. Now you might be thinking, this sounds amazing, but does it hold up to scrutiny? And that's a perfectly valid question. Chomsky's theory of universal grammar, as paradigm-shifting as it was, 
hasn't gone unchallenged. While the concept of universal grammar has been highly influential, it's crucial to remember that science thrives on challenges and alternative explanations. One criticism of Chomsky's theory is that it might overemphasize the role of innate structures. Opponents argue that his focus on the internal biological machinery for language somewhat neglects the power of the environment and the crucial role of social interaction in shaping language development. After all, children don't grow up in a vacuum. They are constantly bombarded with rich social and linguistic cues that contribute immensely to their ability to crack the code of their native language. Another crucial point of contention centers around the incredible diversity of human languages. If we all share a universal grammar, why do languages like Japanese, Finnish, and Arabic differ so profoundly in their structure and sound patterns? Chomsky addressed this by introducing the concept of parameters within the universal grammar framework. Think of these as switches that get flipped during a child's early development, fine-tuning the basic blueprint to accommodate the unique properties of their specific language. Moreover, the question of how an innate capacity for language emerged in the first place poses an evolutionary challenge. Some argue that such a complex trait would have evolved gradually, offering our ancestors survival advantages. Understanding the potential links between universal grammar and the biology of the brain is a complex puzzle scientists are just beginning to tackle. Let's not forget that the very essence of scientific progress lies in the constant debate, the refinement of theories, and the search for the most comprehensive explanation of observed phenomena. Beyond the specific scientific arguments, Chomsky's work prompts us to ponder the very nature of the human mind and the interplay between nature and nurture. Chomsky's bold ideas about language extend beyond the realm of linguistics and into broader philosophical questions. If a fundamental component of language is innate, does this point to some inherent orderliness within our minds, reflecting perhaps a deeper orderliness within the universe itself? The ability to communicate complex ideas, emotions, and experiences through language is one of the defining features of our species. To understand the origins of language is to understand something uniquely human about ourselves. From an evolutionary perspective, we might wonder, did language arise gradually as a series of beneficial mutations? Did it confer such a significant survival and cooperation advantage that it became embedded within our very biology? While we might never have definitive answers to these questions, Chomsky compels us to consider the possible biological underpinnings of our extraordinary ability to communicate. On a practical level, Chomsky's focus on innate linguistic potential raises questions about early childhood development. If children's brains are indeed primed for language acquisition, how can we create environments both at home and in the classroom that nurture this inherent talent? How can we harness this innate ability to maximize children's ability to communicate effectively, to foster self-expression, and unlock their full cognitive potential? The question of whether we are born to speak may never be definitively settled. Yet, the ongoing research inspired by Chomsky's ideas continues to illuminate the remarkable complexity of language. It reveals the incredible power of the human mind and how both biology and the environment interact to shape one of our most fundamental abilities. Perhaps what's most important isn't uncovering the final answer, but the journey of inquiry itself. The pursuit of understanding how something as seemingly ordinary as spoken language is in fact an extraordinary window into the nature of what makes us human.